Well, needless to say, the biggest thing, biggest question, or not the question, biggest statement of the game probably is that we caught them at a very good time. Uh, they haven't had uh, practices like normal, like uh, they were having earlier in the year. They beat Florida State. They beat Duke. Uh, uh, we caught them on a really good time. And uh, uh, for us, it wasn't a really good time for them. Uh, we did share the ball better tonight than we have been doing. Uh, we did everything better except shoot free throws. We didn't make free throws. And shows how smart I am. I had everybody shoot individually 300 free throws this week with the manager counting and everybody on the team shot above 79%. So uh, that didn't work. I'll try something else next week. But uh, have five guys in double figures. It was important. It was a close game. It was a two or three point game. And I think that's when Kerwin went uh, on a stretch there, made two or three threes in a short time period there. And then every time we made a substitution, those guys that came in the game were really important. Dayron was six for eight at uh, halftime, and both of his misses were about a foot away. But, uh, uh, again, I thought he was really active, 21 and 11 for him. But the biggest thing is uh, for us, we shot the ball well, which we haven't done very often this year, and we didn't turn it over very much, 29-11. Uh, uh, those are the kind of things that we've been trying to emphasize more than anything. But, again, we caught a team that uh, didn't have their game legs today. Andrew Jones, go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, 31 to 12 to close the half. Uh, I think the last 33 points were from the freshmen. What was the difference for them during that stretch? And uh, your thoughts on the freshmen having that kind of a run together? I don't think they've had that yet this year. Well, I think it was the majority of it was Kerwin and, and Dayron for sure. Uh, you know, Caleb was three assists, four turnovers tonight. Last game, he was nine assists, two turnovers. And we had five different times he should have had assists because they either missed a shot or they got fouled, and he didn't get the assist. So I was pleased with him uh, tonight. Uh, I think he made one three, I think, during that time period that you're talking about. But most of it was uh, uh, Kerwin and Dayron. And Kerwin made four out of five in one stretch there and then uh, took it to the basket and, and made one off the dribble drive in the open floor as well. But uh, um, I've said all along that I think our pre freshmen are going to be good players. My request is for – to do it during my lifetime, and today it was in the first half. So hope I get to see more than that before I kick out. Jacob Turner, go ahead. Hey, Roy, I know you talked about, you know, Louisville having not played for a while, but just all that aside, is that the best basketball you've seen your team play this season? Yeah, we were good. I mean, we shared the ball. Again, I can remember almost every single turnover. Uh, and But uh, you like that. If you have 30 of them, it's hard to remember everyone. But uh, – uh, I think we did some good things offensively, sharing the ball, moving the ball, and for sure, you know, it's 61% uh, for the game. And the two highest halves we've had all year were the first half, and then we broke that and got beat that in the second half. But defensively, uh, early on in the game, I felt like we were giving up too many second shots, and they had uh, two guys with three offensive rebounds in the first half, but they weren't able to con uh, convert any of those. So we got lucky, and at the start of the second half, First uh, five or six minutes, we had uh, five no box or five second shots for them and five turnovers for us. But other than that, uh, we did some really good things. Brendan. Hey, Coach. Yeah, you, you mentioned, you know, the freshmen will be good at some point, hopefully in your lifetime. Um, do you get a sense that of late, though, that they might be, you know, figuring out the physicality or the rigor of the college game a little bit more? It seems like Walker's getting his legs under him. Um, Kerwin taking the ball off the bounce. I know that's something that hasn't been as uh, familiar for him. Do, do you get a sense that things are sort of making sense to them? Well, I think you used the word physicality. I don't know that they're, they've gotten that by any means because it is such a physical, hard game. But I do think they're understanding what we're asking them to do more and doing a better job with that. Uh, there's no question about that part of it. And it all starts with the guards. I mean, uh, uh, RJ was 3-1. Andrew was 5-0, Kerwin was 4-3, and then Caleb, as I said, was 3-4. It starts with the guards because you've got to get the ball to the big guys who typically have uh, done a great job for us of scoring and making easy shots. Uh, we haven't done that necessarily the last two games very often, but are not at the level we were doing it earlier. And Armando, you know, got in foul trouble in the first half, and uh, he was out, and then all of a sudden Dayron was getting every offensive rebound during that time. And so that's what you like to have happen too. Thank you. Aaron Beard. 
Hey, Roy, you guys added a game last week. You announced another one for this week. Could you see a benefit maybe in the days since the other night where you guys played? You know, you got a game in there, something to build on for these young guys. Did you see a benefit tonight, and do you the result you wanted in that regard? I think they do get a benefit from playing. But, guys, we are, we're, it's legal to have 27 regular season games. I'd like to get 27 in. It's like I told you uh, whenever it was, the last game. Uh, if you lose a game, we're going to try to do everything we can to get a, the ACC games rescheduled. And if that doesn't work, then there's a lot of teams around the country like us that uh, don't have as many games. And so uh, I think it's good for kids to play. Uh, Dayron just walked in. I guarantee he enjoys the games a lot more than he does my practices. And so uh, he's silently, not silently, he's just a very small nod of recognition to our athletic director right there at that time. But I do think kids like to play, and it gives you a little bit more of a rhythm. You have two or three practices, and then you play a game. Two or three practices, and you play a game. Two or three practices, and you play a game. And, uh, you know, we're still hoping we get 27 in. We don't know if it's going to happen or not, but uh, uh, we're still hoping that we do. But, yeah, I think it was a benefit. And, of course, I feel that way because it was my idea. Alyssa, go ahead. Coach, as you mentioned, it shot 61% from the floor tonight. What was clicking offensively for you guys? Well, I think everything. I mean, the biggest stretch was there, Kerwin from the outside, and then Dayron uh, offensive rebounds, and Dayron and Walker Kessler making good passes to each other uh, during that stretch the last, I'm going to guess, 10 minutes of the first half. And uh, I think when we're sharing the ball and moving the ball and everybody's getting involved, I think they enjoy it a heck of a lot more. CL? Uh, CL, try again later. Adam, sorry, sorry, I was trying to all right, go ahead, get it CL. Off mute. Roy Kerwin had a couple of times where he pump faked and drove to the basket as opposed to just settling for the uh outside shot. Is that something that's been kind of a point of emphasis with him in terms of rounding out his total offensive game? I think that would be trying to give the coaches too much credit. I think that Kerwin has been able to do those kind of things, it's just that he's not been comfortable doing it. I'll say something to him about pump fake and get a guy off the ground and that kind of thing. But uh, he's uh, he's showing us a little bit more of his game as as we go along, and I think the the comfort level is the biggest part of it with him. All right, we got time for a couple more before the players. Adam and then Deanna King. Roy, I hear you on the on sharing the ball and the ball movement, but is also maybe the moving without the ball was that that seemed like it was really good tonight, like. Somebody like Dayron, it seemed like he was cutting well and just getting him going to the basket. You know, it seemed like it was a pretty nice formula for you guys because he's so strong around there. Was was the was the moving without the ball maybe better than you've seen it? Well, it's something we've been working on all year long. In my entire coaching career, I've yelled run more than anything, and with this team, I've yelled move more than anything. I'd like to have a certain amount of dollar for every time I've yelled move, but I do think they're understanding that a little bit more and. You know, our our big guys can score. we got to get the ball to them. And then the defense sags back in so much, then all of a sudden those outside shots get a little better. But we've uh, tinkered with the offense a little bit this last week, trying to add one other thing, and uh, maybe that's helped us. But I think the kids just understand it more and uh, understanding everything that we're trying to say and do. And gosh almighty, we've practiced, was it 75 day run? I think we've had 75 practices. I mean, you ought to be able to get some uh, some meaning across to them. Deanna, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I know you're probably never going to say it's fun during the games, but with the energy you, your guys had, how much do you think how much fun they were having passing the ball, playing great team ball, being unselfish? I think they love playing that way, every one of our guys. And, you know, I've always said it takes a special person to enjoy other people's successes. Our guys get so excited when Kerwin makes those shots, and Kerwin doesn't say boo. I mean, we they get him talk, I'm sure, more than we do, but the kids want him to be successful. When, when Dayron is that active around the board, that's something that the guys appreciate. I'll go back again. I'll tell you somebody else, Leaky Black, zero. And everybody loves to see Leaky play well, four assists, one turnover, and I think that then uh, seven rebounds. You know, I showed him after one game we played where a guy on the other team 
was was it 0 for 3? I think it, yeah. Yeah, a guy was 0 for 3, but he had uh, 8 assists, 7 rebounds, or vice versa. He was a key factor in the game. So our guys won't leak in score, but they realize how important he is. It's a, it's a great group that it do, they do enjoy each other. They get after each other. Uh, when I'm not around, they get after me a great deal, and I understand that. And uh, I'm going to get one of them one day to mimic, uh, mimic me and see what it looks like. But they're great kids that enjoy playing basketball and enjoy the team doing well. All right, thanks, Coach. Let's get the uh, – Thanks, Gus. Here, everybody. Got it opened up for Dayron. Dayron.